Hello viewers, good evening. I welcome you all on the behalf of Indian Medical College to this online session. Dear viewers, in today's session, we have a great energetic speaker, a beloved Dr. Muhammad Khalil, who is a professor of Department of Bi Microbiology from Deccan College of Medical Sciences with us. Sir is also a consultant, a clinical and microbiologist at NICE Hospital. He has 18 years of teaching experience for undergrads, postgrads, and USMLE students. So I will be taking a class on the topic meningitis, diphtheria, and tuberculosis today. Good evening, and I welcome, sir. It's an immense pleasure to have you here with us today. Okay, very good evening to all the students and the uh, committee members of the uh, online medical education unit. Thank you, so India. Much. Yeah, fine uh, to start viewers, with. Uh, one second. Uh, yes. Dear viewers, if you have any doubts regarding the session, you can just type them in the comment section below the YouTube live streaming. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, so the queries will be clarified by your doctor at the end of the session. Uh, sir, you can start the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, normally, I keep this slide to start with the uh, sessions in the teaching um, medical college. But today, as Albert Einstein said, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world will have a generation of idiots. But as you can see, everybody is busy with their phones and online. But I think today, if you're talking, nobody has really uh, expected that the teaching would be online like this because of the the coronavirus outbreak. So really this scenario suits us because most of the teaching is online and we are helpless. Fine. Uh, moving ahead from here. Next slide. Uh, today's first topic would be on Neisseria meningitis. And to, but to start exactly, uh, because I have a target of audience today, we, uh, which have undergraduates from different medical colleges all over India, the postgraduates and a few of the um, uh, 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 other faculty members from other specialties. Uh, I will give you a broad introduction on how to have a good conceptual knowledge on uh, uh, different CNS central nervous system infections. So I will introduce you with that. We'll be discussing and interacting on that. Then we'll talk about the virulence factors, pathogenesis, clinical manifestations, laboratory diagnosis, complications, treatment and prophylaxis of Neisseria meningitis. Fine. As you can see, a case, 42-year-old man presents to the emergency department, which normally happens in one fine day with each and every one. Fever, headache, and he also has a neck stiffness and photophobia. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Would it be abscess? Would it be an encephalitis, meningitis, or it could be, might be an infection with negliria foliary or a subarachnoid hemorrhage? Fine, uh, if you just look at the symptoms over here that he has a fever, headache, neck sickness, photophobia, definitely you would like to jump or strong suspicion would go in favor of meningitis. But here you also have to learn that along with this fever, headache and stiffness, if you also have confusion, then your diagnosis is to incline towards encephalitis. At the same time, if you have focal neurological deficit, where uh, if you can elicit by telling the patient or individual to uh, uh, touch his tip of the nose with the tip of the index finger, he won't be able to do, he would be able to undershoot or overshoot it. That's how you elicit focal neurological deafness and that would help you to guide you, your diagnosis towards abscess. Coming about encephalitis, the another thing that you would add to the history along with fever, headache and stiffness would be, you ask him just what did he have in your breakfast, he would be very confused state and he would give you a very vague or weird answer what exactly he didn't have and he would say I had this and all, which the definitely his attendance would decline. So that would help you to make a diagnosis of encephalitis. Fine, moving ahead from here, which is the best next step in management in case of uh, papillary edema. Now here you, it's a very important learning slide. Uh, see, as a doctor, as a clinical microbiologist, I would not like to teach you uh, what is in the books right in your brain through and through without you learning anything and me enjoying my teaching. So what would the best management in or uh, step in management in case of papillary edema or any CNS infection? Is it septriaxone or it is septriaxone or vancomycin, which most of the doctors empirically start and which is very good advisable rather than waiting for the lab reports? Or would you like to go for a CT, CT scan? Or would you like to do a perform a lumbar puncture? Might be an excited state or you want to like see the CHF popping out or might we run a scan on the patient, might be an MRI, or directly start vancomycin, thinking it could be a gram positive. So rather than going helter-skelter from here to here, 
you just look at the word papilledema like now as i said here you have a case of fever this is basically an a, a continuing a continuing question of what we the clinical case we discuss so whenever you get a fever headache neck stiffness and photophobia definitely the patient would have a pulsatile cracking headache and you have to have a non invasive investigation done on this patient to rule out papilledema just refer the patient to ophthalmology department where they would use an ophthalmoscope and check for the uh, optic disc cupping with uh, erythema all around the uh, optic disc which would really suggest it is a case of papil edema which tells you this is a case of intracranial pressure raised in this kind of case clinical scenarios never do a lumbar puncture never do a lumbar puncture again i repeat worth listening worth repeating high yield area never do a lumbar puncture whenever there is a case of increased intracranial pressure which you rule out taking a help of an ophthalmologist doing a lumbar puncture good and that you can he will help you out by telling uh, telling you whether there is an optic disc cupping or not so what you should do do a ct scan do a ct scan and empirically start the patient on ceftriaxone if you think you had sent a report of um, uh, you are i mean empirically you are thinking it could be a better to cover a gram positive organism could be a star for it then simultaneously start with vancomycin but better i think reserve keep vancomycin as reserve drug because it can be given for methicillin resistant staph or yes so i have i made the concept very clear two clinical cases two questions and you have a wonderful knowledge a overall broad concept of how to deal with a case of any case that comes in emergency department landing with fever headache neck stiffness fine now clinical decisions making which is very very important in case like this exclude mass lesion that is space occupying lesions for that you should be doing a ct scan when you ever suspect focal neurological findings as i said patient will complain with uh, an abscess where you can have a, a cavity filled with pus go for ct scan if increase intracranial pressure which you rule out with the help of an ophthalmology friend saying it is a case of papilledema or it could be a severe confusion where the patient is not able to give you a clear cut what did he have in breakfast or what did he wear yesterday or what morning or with whom did he talk on phone so in these cases do a ct scan yes reserve vancomycin because lot of penicillin drug resistance have already developed if it is a case of pneumococci which is a causative agent in almost all age groups right from your neonate till your adults most common organism in all age groups pneumococcal pneumonia which is no more penicillin is a drug of choice at this scenario yes streptaxon cefotaxim third generation cefalosporin are the drug of choice for streptococcus pneumonia neisseria meningitis and hemophilus pneumonia what is very common in these three organisms all are capsulated organism all have iga proteus which destroys the iga which produces local immunity and you have conjugate vaccines against these three organisms that is if the capsule of these organisms are polysaccharide when you add protein component to it it becomes conjugate so that it becomes t dependent you have a memory cell so that whenever any organism attacks this patient it has a memory moving ahead from here as i said cns infections meningitis if and if you just look at this uh, slide over here a uh, fever headache is very common in all these things meningitis encephalitis brain abscess what you have to learn today or what did you learn today is i find photophobia meningitis i see confusion in encephalitis yes definitely there is focal neurological deficit in brain abscess otherwise very difficult to diagnose in case of emergency almost all symptoms are same yeah what is meningitis which is one of my favorite favorite slide i don't know if you forgot your anatomy yeah let me remind you that the meninges are nothing but in there are layers around the brain which separates it from the skull please concentrate your 45 minutes is worth your lifetime learning the knowledge pyometer arachnoid matter dura mater from inner to outer the mnemonic is pad i repeat again pyometer arachnoid matter dura mater inner to outside and these are the membranes that cover the brain and spinal cord till l2 lumbar vertebrae 2 but as such the membranes you have the continuity of the spinal canal till s2 till s2 where the csf floats in between these membranes fine pyometer and arachnoid matter together are called leptomeninges fine now where is the infection basically what happens in meningitis it is a infection that occurs in the subarachnoid space mind you it is the infection that occurs in the subarachnoid space which extends from till s2 fine uh, so when you do a lumbar puncture what you should take the precaution measures i really want to know the anatomy just go back sit yes you have the all aseptic precautions you have the lumbar puncture preparation done you have the patient you have a special posture ask him to bend 
with his head in between the knees you have so that the lumbar l4 l5 uh, region gets project you put the lumbar function needle yes it has to go through the skins then the ligaments then the epidural space as i said the outermost layer is dura mater the middle layer is arachnoid and the innermost layer is pyramid mater so you have the epidural space then you go through the dura mater then you have a a pop sound where you enter the arachnoid that should really clinch you that you are in the right space what do you want to get there from it is nothing but the fluid cerebral spinal fluid and once you are there by a uh, suction or because of the vacuum the csf starts dropping dribbles out which you collect in a sterile vacuum tuner send it for microbiology pathology and the biochemistry distributed equally what do you check in biochemistry proteins and sugars what do you check in microbiology the um, uh, yes you do a gram stain to know the etiology you do a culture and sensitivity which takes about 48 hours the only emergency in microbiology department is csf gram stain because the doctor is very much interested to know exactly is it a gram positive or gram negative at least you should be able to do a gram stain which takes about hardly 10 minutes and just call him up on the phone and tell him he will be the happiest person on earth he will never forget the report which you told him that day because it will really help him diagnose the case and write exactly the antibodies to start with a gram negative or to cover the gram positive fine where does this gram negative meningitis live exactly it lives or it inhabits in the nasopharynx or the oropharynx the other organism which you remember that stays in your nasopharynx is staph aureus and also one virus which is really uh, creating a havoc or nightmare these days is nothing but the coronavirus fine these are the virulence factors details i would be going into details because you might be having in your standard textbooks of uh, microbiology might be anand narayan or apurva shankar shastri fine the virulence factors are capsular polysaccharide there are about 13 zero groups but what we are very important is about the five zero groups that is a b c w y and e i forgot to write e over here uh, but uh, yes definitely you can put e over here and the mnemonic to remember uh, the this six zero groups is a b c why i should remember right you can just see this mnemonic a b c y w e are the six zero groups and how you remember a b c why i should remember is a mnemonic for you to remember this six important zero groups fine uh the same mechanism that happens because of the cytochrome uh, burst occurs and you have the tunnel nucleus factor alpha release the interleukin 1 six that produces fever and the other valence factors of fimbria because of uh, you know the function of fimbria they attach very strongly you have the other itomembrane proteins then you have the iga proteins that is already discussed fine this is a very good pic if you have mobile with you you can take a, a picture of that and as you can see over here you have the uh, let me use some colors over here yes you have the nizira meningitis invading over here then going into the blood vessels then you have the cytokine production interleukin 1 8 6 tumor necrosis factor alpha then you also have this uh, uh, layer as i can show you it crosses the blood brain barrier it produces this is a subarachnoid space where this organism might have gone and inflamed the uh, uh, sub dura mater and uh, inflammation of meninges occurs fine uh, let's go to the next slide from here risk factors people who smoke people who have viral co infections other than um, the bacteria yeah that this is a very important slide uh, the point over here to carry away if you just go back to immunology the complement mediated system people who have uh, immune deficiency uh with c5678 9 that is the membrane attacking complex or terminal pathway these people are more prone for nizira infections and also please keep in mind mind there are people there where there's overcrowding close contact like your interview or military barracks again like your corona and all uh, there are more chances of because nasopharynx is the uh, have, uh, place where they reside and droplet infection is the mode of transmission good let's proceed to the next slide uh, um, what are the group of uh, organism that cause in different age groups please remember the simonic you don't have to break your bread uh, heads on this the the bell has to ring in your brain the mnemonic to remember neonatal meningitis is b e l b for group b streptococci e for escherichia coli and l for listeria monocytogenes again repeat bell is a mnemonic for you to remember the causative agents of neonatal meningitis group b streptococci escherichia coli listeria monocytogenes Kavya, everything okay? Just to uh, cross check and update. Am I mean, audible and the video is okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are perfect. 
fine let me know if i have like um, i know it's 15 minutes if i cross 20 minutes just give me a uh, alarm kind of or indicator sure sure a reminder sure, sure. fine okay sure, sir, because sure, there are three sir. topics that has to be covered okay. uh, fine because i get involved uh, so children yes hemophilus influenza nizira meningitis uh, and streptococcus but i would like you to remember h influenza is one of the most common to cause to agent in children age group adults yes definitely nizira meningitis and most of the children uh, the course students have a doubt sir i found some like streptococcus pneumonia here and there and then as I see, you can see over here as i already told you streptococcus pneumonia is a causative agent in almost all age group but if they ask you most common cause of uh, neonatal meningitis then their answer should be group b if it is western usmle harrison it is e coli if it is india and if it is children it is hemophilus influenza and if it adults nizira meningitis fine uh, this is uh, the viral cause of neonatal meningitis because in viral meningitis you don't have pus forming that's the reason why it's also called aseptic meningitis please students remember don't get confused aseptic meningitis is nothing but viral meningitis and the causative agents are already displayed on the slide you can take a pic of that also enterovirus paramyxovirus herpes virus any of this not in all india class but later on i will able to teach you herpes simplex virus 1 is responsible for causing encephalitis herpes virus simplex virus 2 causes temporal or sporulent meningitis adenovirus arbovirus clevi bunya actually they cause meningoencephalitis the fungal causes of meningitis i would like you to remember only this very important cause streptococcus meningitis other than candida aspergillus histoplasma coccidioides imitus parasites don't forget parasites because that might be the last topic or the boring topic but yes definitely they also cause endemic gastritis neglira pauleri primary amoebic meningoencephalitis acanthamoeba granulomatous amoebic meningoencephalitis toxoplasma also causes encephalitis so this is the advantage of having i mean a good team and good organization and you get good staff you have this all these things covered in at one area at one place fine pathogenesis i already discussed on this transmission direct contact respiratory droplet because that's the nasopharynx and uh, overcrowding places are more gram negative bacteria diplococci plano convex let me draw this for you the morphology okay gram negative is bean shape uh, gonococci is bean shape and uh, reniform shape kidney shape whereas meningococci is plano convex both are gram negative diplococci what are three common things in nigeria gonococci meningococci one the gram negative diplococci two people who have deficiency of terminal complement pathway c5 to c9 they are more prone for nigeria infection three the mode of sorry the treatment part third generation sporins are the drug of choice in both of them you have to remember this fine let's go to the next slide clinical manifestation yes fever neck stiffness chills rigors photophobia then you have headache in people who are fair skin you have this red spots visible or else in people like india it's very difficult to get those things fine next slide yeah suppose you don't treat this case of meningitis then as you can see these people will land up with meningococcemia where this bacteria has land up in um, the blood stream and is almost disseminated well and from perfuria petechiae it can form hemorrhagic bullae that's the most dangerous part and it's very difficult for you to treat this patient from here as you can see a pic image pic that is this pic hemorrhagic these are called hemorrhagic bullae because of the hemorrhagic necrosis of the adrenal glands dic induced microthrombi and hemorrhage these are all produced and this syndrome together is called waterhouse prediction syndrome please remember this this can be a question for you not in india fine laboratory diagnosis let i'll just uh, wrap up with the um, uh, in the uh, the laboratory diagnosis flow charts part as you can see this is the posture that patient is um, put up to before the lumbar puncture collection and l5 l4 l5 is the most prominent and what do you do i'll talk about this later on yeah this is a very important one of my favorite uh, usml is step 1 or step 2 uh, cabular column yeah any patient coming with headache lethargy vomiting stiffnesses just rule out just ask him if he has a very high risk behavior of promiscuity or iv drug abuse then suspect it could be a case of uh, fungal meningitis this is a very important history right good uh, then you should remember uh, also uh, look at this um, uh, uh, proteins and sugar levels you know the drug of the selective media that is used for fungus is sabrose dextrose agar because fungus loves sugar uh, and uh, that's the reason why sugar is decreased sugar or dextrose is decreased in case of fungal meningitis bacteria also love sugar that is decreased whereas 
not much change when you talk about viral meningitis. There is no much change in proteins or might be pressure or might be the sugar. They are almost neutral. Whereas viral being the uh, chronic infection, definitely, whenever I talk about lymphocytes are increased, it's viral infection. But if pus cells are increased, it is neutrophils. I hope you're understanding the importance of what I'm talking. Please give me your undivided attention and I'll give you the subject. Neutrophils or pus cells are always increased in bacterial infection. Lymphocytes are always increased in chronic infections like viral. And you can see that proteins are increased in almost your fungal and also bacterial infection. That's how things will, I mean, tomorrow if you have the report from your bacteriology or your biochemistry or your pathology, this will, this table will really help you out. Fine. In which type of infection you grams in? Obviously, you won't do gram stain in fungal, MTB or viral. Definitely, you will do gram stain in bacterial to know exactly what cause of positive. If I say gram or negative diplococci, plenoconvex, most of the extra cells, then your diagnosis will be nizirigonera. If I say gram positive bacilli, it will be listeria minus rotation. If I say uh, gram, uh, if I say gram positive uh, cocci in pairs with capsule, it is streptococcus pneumonia. So that's how it will, gram stain will help you out to diagnose in case of bacterial infection. Gram stain is done only for one fungus, that is candida, which is a rare cause of meningitis because streptococcus is the most common cause. Acid fast stain, yes, you do mostly for MTB. State is slightly called pink color bus line. Fine. India ink, to demonstrate the capsule, you mostly do again in cryptococcus. Treatment, as I already told you, ceftriaxone or cefotaxime are drug of choice, third generation in case of bacterial infection. Because uh, in fungal infection is almost uh, systemic infection is already there. You start with amphotericin B or procytosin because it's a systemic manifestation. But once you see the patient is recovering, then go for oral fluconazole. But in case of viral, nothing doing. Only the patient has fever. Give him paracetamol, bed rest, and start him on just IV fluids. So we have already discussed about this. Yeah. Uh, you can elicit these signs also like Kernick sign where you ask the patient to uh, flex his knees, the head gets flexed or flex his knees, uh, sorry, flex his knees, the hip get flexed over here. This is called connect sign. And when you flex the, ask the patient to uh, uh, draw his knees uh, together, the head gets flexed. So these are some signs which you can elicit. Yeah, coming to the laboratory diagnosis, yes, CSA is got, uh, you do a gram stain, as I told you, you do a gram stain, you go to a ZN stain, to know bacterial causes or TB causes, you do an Indian to know the fungal causes. You do capsule demonstration also by Quillen's reaction or latex agglutition test or an India ink stain. Fine. You have the non-selective agar like chocolate agar, bed agar, BHA broth. I want, but I want students to remember that uh, the 23rd state that is formed in India, which is Telangana, TLN. This is the abbreviated form of the Telangana state. T goes for Thayer Martin medium, M, L goes for modified Lewis, N goes for New York City medium. This is the selective media for might be, this is the first common uh, uh, similarity between the both the nasal areas, the selective media. Thay Martin medium, Levis medium, the New York City medium. Fine, where are we now? Yeah, treatment, we have already covered this. Yes, you, I said five zero groups, A, C, W, and E. Yeah, five zero groups, why I should remember. But just remember, I would like you to remember that the, you don't have vaccine for group B because it has silicic acid as a residual complex in capsule and you don't have vaccine. That's the reason why. And that is a zero group that is very common in US. Yeah, people who are uh, carriers, rifampicin is a drug of choice. The one thing you I would like you to remember in this slide is chemoprophylaxis or people who are working in labs or people who are doing research or people who are carriers, rifampicin is the drug of choice. Yeah, uh, this is one of the slides I would, because anyhow, the, uh, the, the organizers are going to share you on the YouTube. I would strongly suggest it is nothing but a summary or a revision slide of what we have talked, a very good nutshell, you cover the entire Nizere meningitis. Fine. Uh, there are some cases. I'll just wrap up with uh, two, three uh, MCQs. As you can see, one question that is displayed over here. Uh, most common um, associ uh, cause associated with acute neural meningitis except. So I already tell you the bell should ring in your um, uh, brain. E is here. Group B is called Sotokos Vagalitishe. And uh, yes, listed image. The answer is because the question is as except lizard meningitis is not the cause in neonatal meningitis. So we have a run through of MCQs over here. Uh, without wasting much time, I would close the session of lizard meningitis. I would definitely go to the uh, next session that is diphtheria. So fine. Uh, let me sh stop sharing. 
can uh, let me share a fresh skin over here. Let's start with the TB over here, right? Uh, Kavi, are we doing good? Yes, sir, you're doing perfect. Fine. Uh, let's go to the slideshow from here. Yeah. Do we have the uh, complete slide, Kavya? Can you confirm it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is fine. Good. Right. Uh, the university, just, I mean, I don't know from which place you are, wherever you are scattered all over India. I wish you all the best. But this is a list of uh, questions that have been asked in for the undergraduates. Um, fine. It's, uh, it's all, because TB is everybody's property, right? From anatomy to your medicine. Uh, and every doctor who graduates from his medical college uh, would definitely should have a knowledge of uh, TB, cholera, malaria. So let's start from here. Fine. Desh uh, Jitega, TB Harega was the uh, slogan that was given by the health minister, the campaign uh, slogan. And the uh, world global campaign for the TB was, it's time to end TB. This is one of the questions that we can ask you in Vivas and all. Fine. Uh, yeah, I would like you to remember here that TB is an obligate, yeah, obligate aerobe. Nagging pets must breathe. That's a mnemonic. If we, if, if we have general microbiology topic at the time. But remember just nocardia, Pseudomonas, MTB, and bacillus anthracis, nagging pets must breathe. This is a mnemonic for you to remember. Obligate aerobe bacteria. Fine. MTB is an obligate aerobe. Fine. Uh, it is a gram positive. Uh, it is weakly gram positive, uh, but that's the reason why you use special stain like acid fast stain. Classification this is there in the textbook of Anantanaran. You can go back leisurely and look at that. This is how they, culti they classify bacteria based on the cultivable, uh, cultivable, non cultivable. The mycobacterium, this only species that is not cultivable is mycobacterium leprae. Otherwise, you have plenty of saprophytes which are not important. Uh, John's bacillus, which is also called mycobacterium paratuberculosis. Uh, mycobacterium that causes skin ulcers are mycobacterium ulcerans and balni. And atypical mycobacterium, you have photochromosomes, photochromosomes, non photo, and rapid growers. And typical TB bacilli, but that is nothing but the TB. Don't get confused, it's nothing but the MTB complex, which has the human type, the bovine type, which affects the cows the whole type which affects the rats and the African type. So this is four in together, they are called MTV complex. Uh, today we are not we are not going to cover the entire uh, the entire classification, but we are going to concentrate only on the uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis of the human origin. Fine, the, everybody knows it spreads through droplet nuclei or the other uh, route might be consumption of raw milk, which is not pasteurized. And um, why TB bacilli is able to survive in our in body because the macrophages that engulf the MTBs resist the phagocytosis. That's the reason why they are in the, uh, what do you call the macrophages. Then slowly, uh, what do you happen? The gene cells get activated. They are uh, case that finally they become the big granuloma. Then you have the caseous necrosis formed. I think the pathology people also teach you this, but I being a clico I would like to elaborate this. You have the, uh, what do you call the antigen presenting, TB antigen being presented to and uh, you have the gene cells, then you have the granuloma, then you have the case of necrosis. Then finally, the TB bacillus dies because of necrosis and you have lack of oxygen. Fine. The virulence factor is very, very important. Might be a UG, PG, or all India, USMLE. CAT G gene. And this is the reason why any mutations in CAT G gene leads to resistance to isoniazid. Fine. Then you have the sulfatides, then you have the cod factor, which is the main virulence factor, which is the chemical composition is called triallose, trimycolate. Then you have the VAXD. Then finally, a minimal or minor portion of villain factor is tubercle protein. Finally, what happens in pathogenesis? Finally, the GONS focus is formed, which is known as the primary TB. In primary TB, you have the GONS topic. I mean, exactly where the, the bronchi branches into two. If you have the surrounding lymph nodes enlarged along with the inflammation of the uh, trachea or the bronchi where it's, uh, the inflammation is there, then it's a primary complex. Then if you have fibrosis along with calcification mixed with the primary complex, then it is called Ranke's complex. See, most of the things, all these PowerPoints or slides have been prepared, keeping in mind, right from secondary MBS till your all India need, your ASML is step one and step two. And then you also have words used like Simmons complex, which is nothing but post-primary TB. People who have had a TB, but again, they have a reinfection, especially this occurs in adults. And upper lobe is mostly involved because upper lobe is more aerated because oxygen comes to come on the top. 
then you have the infraclavicular lesion localized mode which is called asman's focus what happens in secondary tb the patient with may land up with reactivation granulomas or it might disseminate to the other organs laboratory diagnosis yes what is the specimen of choice tb affects lungs definitely it also affects extra pulmonary like your kidney brain except your skin hair nails i think it's most of the parts in your entire body is affected with tb and you should know what system it is and what specimen to collect that's how you remember so respiratory system sputum if you do not have sputum then you can go for bronchial alveolar lavage or the bronchial washing or the et secretions and what do you do with this once the sample samples come to the ma'am you do a stain you do do a, definitely do a gram stain but they are weekly gram positive that's the reason why you go for special stain like zn stain or your fluorescent microscopy if you had a led microscope what is the minimum quantity of bacillus that should be present in 1 ml of sputum to detect mycobacteria this is very very important 50000 bacillus should be present in 1 ml of sputum to detect mycobacteria now this is an rntcp grading please go back look in your books you have different gradings like international union against tuberculosis lung disease you have rntcp gradings then you have a who grading then you have cdc grading cdc because we in india we have to follow this revised national tuberculosis control program now uh, which is called revised uh, national tb tb eradication program this is the latest uh, revised name that has been given to it so please go back this is there in your uh, google or just type rntcp program rntcp grading of tb this is this every student has to remember this fine this is a typical tb lab uh, this is a walk in incubator you have this uh, 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 it's the, this is the high, it has to be designed and by safety level 2b has to be uh, this is a workplace every special care you have to use an n95 mask generation time as i said is 12 to 20 hours that's the reason why 1 tb to divide into 2 tb this is the time that is taken that's the reason why conventionally if you are processing tb it will take 4 weeks for you to give the report to the patient nobody waits you have lot of automation development uh, advancement made these days to give the report in 90 minutes believe me yes in 90 minutes you can give the tb report these days and the uh, uh, what do you call the automation that is done these days is called cbnat c i think most of the students knows about this cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test but it's also called gene expert which is done free of cost all over india it's government authorized as you can see people put a preview for second paper egg based media then you have serum low plus serum slow you have blood based like tarshis you have potato based like polski all this can be used other than your lovenstein jensen media which is the this 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 media is one of the most common selective media that is used over here fine this is another table to differentiate mtb from atypical micro again this is a table which you can find in your standard test books yeah this is one important thing i would like to discuss tuberculin test which is also called uh, mantus test which might be taught to you for you in immunology Type four hepatitis reaction where zero point one mL, zero point one mL of purified protein derivative is given on the flexor aspect of the forearm. So if the patient is asked to come after twenty four to forty hours, and you look for induration if it is more than ten mL, then it is significant. Other than erythema, which will indicate infection, especially in small age group in infants, not in adults. It is not a confirmatory test for active infection, mind you. it is only a prognostic test it is not a diagnostic test fine uh, serology it is no more done it is banned please remind this 5 6 years i think 2007 8 uh, it was banned from that time nobody is doing serology for tuberculosis yes rapid diagnosis you have lot of tests like pcr rapid fragment like polymorphism dna probes all this take time the cumbersome they are very costly i would like you to remember just one test that is called gene expert or you have said this one more test called uh, mycobacterium growth indicator tube which is called mgit all students please worth listening what are the two latest automated test that is done for tb these days your answer should be gene expert and cbnat gene expert or cbnat the second test is mgit which is fluorescent based method for diagnosis of tb this is a conventional tb lg medium but no more done because they will take 4 weeks whereas gene expert will take or cbnet will take 90 minutes mgat will take 2 weeks fine uh, this is a pharmacology topic i would not like touch upon this what is the treatment first line treatment second line treatment uh, one thing i would like to you to i mean would like to share with you is 
Demonic for remembering the first line drugs. Priest. P for parazinamide, R for rifampicin, isoniazid, ethambutolin, streptomycin. Fine. BCG vaccine is one uh, which is given uh, most commonly uh, right from the time of birth. Intradermally, it is given 0. Point, this again you will be taught in pediatrics, but I would definitely touch upon here. 0. 0.1 ml of uh, vaccine is given intradermally, especially at birth. So protect for the children who are newly born in India against TB. And the vaccine used is Danish 1331. Fine. This is another slide which is nothing. A very good summary slide. And whatever we have talked uh, would really help you out to uh, just go through because anyhow, luckily or fortunately, this thing is being displayed or being shared in the YouTube. So I think I would conclude this also session of my MTB and then go for diphtheria. Uh, Kavya, do we have time or 10-15 uh, minutes more? We still have 20 minutes. Sir. 20 minutes. That would be really great. So uh, I will go to the next presentation. Where is the yeah? Fine, you just can have a clinical vignette displayed over here. This is a typical case um, or a vignette that's uh, been uh, you would be having before your exam on the exam day or a case in life. A five year old child because childhood disease. Fever and soreness of throat also develops difficulty in breathing. Throat swab, see this should, should give a clue. Throat swab was collected. Throat swab was collected and a direct smear was made and in vitro toxicity testing was done. Now this should give a second clue. What are they talking about? Fine, they are talking about diphtheria which is nothing but an acute bacterial infection of upper respiratory tract uh, characterized by formation of pseudomembrane and toxemia. Because it's a gram positive, it releases exotoxin. Fine. Uh, please remind, uh, may, let me make you clear that Streptococcus pyogenes is also one of the most common bacterial agent that causes picture like this. But in Streptococcus pyogenes, you do not have a pseudomembrane. And suppose if in exam, if he gives you list the organism causing sore throat and write about morphology, pathogen of any organism, I would suggest you to pick up Streptococcus pyogenes rather than diphtheria. But if you have any questions, something like this, which we discussed in the previous slide, please go for diphtheria. Fine. Uh, at the next session, describe the we'll, today we learned like morphology, cultural characteristics of diphtheria, along with labor diagnosis, and this were the questions that was asked previously. LHGL precipitation test as a four marker. As you can see over here, it was first described and observed by Kleb. And the reason why I put this the history uh, because uh, sometimes counter diphtheria is uh, comes out or they discuss diphtheria as Kleb Lofler's bacillus or KLB bacillus. Don't be confused. Hey, we have never listened about this. We never heard. In my life, and nobody taught us. It's nothing. KB Basler is nothing but Klebs Lofler's because he observed and described, and Lofler cultivated it first. And as you can see, a typical picture this is a Chinese letter because the toughest language anybody would like to, I mean, learn to write or pronounce or understand is the Chinese language. And this is a typical pattern of diphtheria where uh, they are arranged in XLV forms because of incomplete suppression. Please, list, worth listening. Again, I repeat. Why are the bacilli arranged like this? this? Is the most common question asked by the examiners because of incomplete separation after binary division. This should the answer you should give. The bacilli are arranged in Chinese letter pattern or cuneiform pattern because the bacilli do not get separated after binary division. That's the reason why they are in XLV forms. Number one, two green color bacilli because the special stain you use for coronal diphtheria, though you use gram positive, as you can see over here, I have put aerobic gram positive too. But it, again, this is also a weekly gram positive. That's the reason why you use special stain like uh, Albert stain. You use Albert stain. This is very important. Albert stain, which has a malachite green in it. That's the reason why they take up green color. So how you describe diphtheria? Green color bacilli with bluish black metachromatic granules with bluish black metachromatic granules at the polar ends. Polar ends. That's the reason. And these granules are also given different names like volatile babes and as granules. They are also given different names. There are a lot of things that you have to remember in diphtheria and bacillus anthracis. Believe me, a lot of mug up, a lot of road learning has to be done. But believe me, at the end of this slide, there's one very beautiful slide that you understand the entire diphtheria and it covers almost every diphtheria. So that I have put it at the end. Fine. So where are we now? Yes, it's aerobic. And yeah, uh, green color bacilli, bluish black, metachromatic granules, incomplete separation gives a Chinese letter pattern. What are the other names? Ernest, Babes Ernest granules, polyethylene granules. 
what are the different stains used for diphtheria albert stain what are the different stains used to stain this uh, what do you call this polar bodies uh, pan just remember p a n ponder stain albert stain nisa stain right let's go back to the next slide yes what is the selective media believe me low flux serum slope is not the selective media it's just an enrichment media uh, the advantage is you have rapid growth within 6 to 8 suppose i let this explain you the importance of low flux serum slope you are epidemiologist or immunologist you have been given a call uh, doctor why didn't you go to the school swanso school i believe there is an outbreak of sore throat in this school children just go then i would literally go with the sore swab ask every child to open his mouth tell the sore swab come back inoculate low flux serum slope in 6 to 8 hours have the growth of metachromatic granules and i would like okay could be not confirm how do you confirm grow in potassium to lead delega i would not let but how much time this will take 48 hours so that's the difference but still i would not confirm because there are so many strains of diphtheria that are inhabitant on your sore throat then how do you confirm doctor prognostic 6 to 8 hours low flow serum it could be or could not be potassium to lead delega it could be strong suspicion how do you confirm i would do a toxigenetic testing i will use in vitro and in vivo test which we are going to discuss about that so what is the selective media for diphtheria potassium telluride blood agar what are the modifications of that macleod or hollis media okay what happened later on macleod he classified diphtheria based on the growth on the diphtheria into three types gravis intermediates mitis as the name suggests gravis is like grave and intermediates is intermediate form mitis is small mighty small so as you can I mean, just to remember that paralytic complications are occurring gravis hemorrhagic occurs in your hemorrhage gravis and intermediates whereas obstructive lesions are more common with mitis infections and as you can see also the epidemic are more common with see these are some things where you have to just pick up and uh, mnemonic you have to remember otherwise things become messy for you not important just i would like you to remember that special uh, his serum water is used for sugar fermentation days of diphtheria otherwise it's not that important fine uh yeah already we have discussed about this uh, pathogen is confined to humans only most common infection in 3 to 10 years and uh, same as meningitis droplet infection same as tb that's a very common thing in today's topic mtb nasal meningitis and diphtheria all are droplet infection fine what happens here based on site of infection you have the uh, facial and the anterior nasal the pharyngeal diphtheria the tonsillar diphtheria i mean i'll show you some pics where you can understand what's happening yeah these are the, the pics where you can see the erythematous sore throat the entire throat is gone red step and you can see the pseudo membrane very nicely over here and they will sometimes ask you what is this pseudo membrane for people who are in second mbbs it is nothing but fibrinous exudate together with this integrating epithelial cells lymphocytes plasma cells leukocytes erythrocytes please take a pic of this if you have mobile phone with you or any of this being shared complication they can as they are diphtheria can cause asphyxia acute circulatory failure post diphtheritic paralysis it can also cause septic causing pneumonia and toxemia we are going to learn more on this yeah malignant septic hemorrhagic as you can see here bull neck deformity typical bull neck deformity is there yeah so let's talk about pathogens it's a gram positive bacilli exotoxins all diphtheria strains do not cause diphtheria only those diphtheria that are affected with bacteriophage beta phage i hope most of the people have forgot because microbiology is very volatile so please remember those diphtheria strains which are affected with bacteriophage those only those strains can only land up the individual with diphtheria and this um, occurs this bacteria this strains get because of this lysogenic conversion which you might have learned in bacterial genetics that is a virus affecting a bacteria might have trans taken up something and made up other another bacteria it has transferred properties from one bacteria to another bacteria because of this phage fine uh, what is a uh, toxin production strain is most of all india question park william 8 strain is used to demonstrate the toxin production another very very important point all india point of view what iron concentration definitely plays a very important role in toxin production now why why are you talking about this we want to confirm the strain which have isolated from the patient whether it is toxigenic or not now that's the reason we have to remember this concentration of iron plays a role park william 8 strain is used as a control what happens exactly what does this toxin do in our body it inhibits the elongation factor 2 by inhibiting the therefore inhibiting the protein synthesis by nadpa nucleotide adenine dinucleotide it inhibits the elongation factor 2 therefore finally 
inhibiting the protein synthesis it also has diphtheria toxin also has receptors on your heart on your adrenal glands on your facial nerve that's the reason why we were talking like it can cause myocarditis it can cause toxicity it can cause irreversible facial paralysis the mnemonic for remembering this is man because it occurs in individual myocarditis adrenal gland toxicity and nerve endings paralysis and as you can see a pic that is displayed over here these are diphtheria toxin this is a receptor and this goes inside this goes inside this is acidification of endosome what's happening the elongation factor 2 nadp nad is there it becomes inactive and finally the entire protein synthesis gets inhibited and the cell dies fine we are talking about in vivo and in vitro the experimental animal of choice is guinea pig over here and this is for using for the demonstration of toxin why you don't do here you use subcutaneous route of infection in guinea pig it causes death so there are two routes subcutaneous route intracutaneous route these are all there in the textbook there is no doubt about it but once listening is no harm they just ask you which is good doctor is it subcutaneous route or intracutaneous route as you can see i have marked here that in subcutaneous route when you inject the toxin in guinea pig there is a death but in whereas intracutaneous route there is no death so in vivo is when you do experiments in inside the human body in vitro is something which you do in your lab so this is the lx gel precipitation test is very very important it can come as a image based question in all india or it could be asked in viva very important in optic exercise your practical records in your second abs so it's nothing but which you already might have learned in immunology example for immuno deficient double dimension double deficient method which is example quoted as lx gel precipitation test fine just concentrate on the figure displayed over there this is an uh, what do you call filter sterile filter paper disc paper which is impregnated with anti toxin 1000 units per ml and this is a soft gel this is a soft gel um, agar in which you had added uh, horse serum okay which is in a molten state and uh, then what did you do you have streak some lines over here this is uh, this then you have the uh, what do you call that positive control this is the negative control which you have in your labs and this is a stress strain which you have isolated from the patient see what's happening the anti toxin from here will diffuse this way and the toxin from here will diffuse this way so they meet at one point where line of precipitants are formed in form of arrowheads i hope you understand if you don't understand the the organizing will can share my mail id they can you can come back me later on fine so this arrowheads are formed like this so that's how you confirm it's a case it's a typical toxin uh, strain producing diphtheria prophylaxis yes you have definitely good news you have a vaccine for it every child is given at 6 week 10 weeks 14 weeks again you are taught this in spm and pediatrics but still is not my subject area but still i i will uh, cover it very daringly i'll jump over it active vaccination d tap vaccine don't remember dpt d tap t a p a is nothing but aslar but this is given 6 weeks 10 weeks 14 weeks anterior lateral part of the thigh of the child yeah the other diphtheria like ulcerans uh, pseudo tuberculosis not important the uh, schick skin test which is something like dick test which you do in streptococcus pyogenes you, in, you inject in a patient whom you think he could be susceptible and there are some uh, reactions erythema and necrotic reaction that is producing yeah fine i think we have are we, we are done with this uh, uh, let me uh, just uh, wrap up with this i think we have a good slide which i can discuss after this this is any of you are going to share this in youtube you can go through this yeah 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 if yes sir forget about this can you just in one slide i am a slow learner can you just wrap up the session of dipti raj you can see here i don't know how many people watch movies please please do watch movies good movies movies that can give you knowledge i watched this movie bhagi uh, part 2 in which tiger sharaf is a hero and you you just let's talk about the movie now uh, he's i mean he wants to learn his father sends him to kerala Uh, some praise and he's he wants to learn that kung fu and uh, if you have seen these movies of kung fu's and karate's uh, normally they shows in movies that uh, first side, first fight is lost second fight is also lost second please look at the uh, pointer i'm using over here third fight is lost now this hero our hero mr microbiologist he comes back b a c k with a plan in the fourth fight to win over the villain i repeat again we are talking about by the way come back from bagi to movie to the class over here okay fine what are we doing here we are talking about corini bacterium diphtheria how to remember this 
you are talking about a person who i mean who is very interested to win over a heart of his heroine or whatever it is or who has inspired in his life to being something so first fight he was very tough he lost second fight he also lost third fight international national local he all lost but fourth fight he gets very serious in life now is the time to come back with a plan b a c e how do you remember back b for bredagar c for collis k for potassium tolerate bredagar back just listen to the pronunciation back is similar with black back black so bledagar colony back black colonies black color colonies are produced on potassium tolerate bledagar okay have you i think we have learned this so comes back with a plan what is plan over here plan is nothing but ponder stain low flux methylene blue stain albert stain nisa stain these are all the stains that are used to stain the uh, metachromatic granules so that is the plan so that you should have a blueprint every player every i mean you i might have watched movies that everybody has a blueprint or plan so blueprint is nothing but leafless methylene uh, blue that is used over here okay let's come back so where does this guy has to go to become master expert in that fight he has to go to a kung fu club now you might have watched those movies kung fu hustle and 36 chambers of shaolin and all so kung fu club club why did they use a word because diphtheria is described as club because of the shape now this kung fu clubs are more common in chinese so i have given a chinese inscription why because you, i wanted the students to remember it is resembles a chinese letter pattern fine where what is the name of this club it's the name of the club is shaolin temple fine what does s stands for shikstes what does h stands for state stands for uh, herd immunity in diphtheria herd immunity can be achieved o for oxygen negative a for albert stain l for low flux serum slow i for immunization yes you have a immunization n for neuropathogenic it affects the nerve endings of the facial nerve already i told you about that t for telluride potassium chloride bedagar is used it produces edema around the lesions m for metachromatic granules p for palatopharyngeus the facial facial muscles are affected l for lysogenic conversion all stains that are lysogenic conversion only can cause diphtheria e for lhl precipitation test now if you can let's look at this hero standing for kung fu club you have to stand in this posture where you have your left or right leg bind to the ground and one leg you have to lift so that you can kick on the head opponent of the opponent if you can just concentrate this a uh, shape a formed over here and b is used for binding this leg so i wrote a b c d e of convent diphtheria so basically it's nothing but to remember the toxin mechanism okay adp ribosylation it inhibits by abt7 it inhibits the elongation factor 2 okay convert and diphtheria cd is convert diphtheria what does it do it has two toxin a toxin b toxin b is binding a is active part what does it do it inhibits the elongation factor 2 that's how you remember a b c d of diphtheria so i think i have justified so i think we are 730 is exactly kavya are we doing good yes sir we are we are done I, sir yeah i think we are done thank you very much this is another slide uh, my uh, the summary slide which you can just uh, go through in the youtube which will be uploaded very shortly thank you very much please come back see there are a lot of sessions i can um, i mean take up if you want to have mcq sessions or if you want to have exclusively image based questions or if you have want to have an exclusively practical sessions or if you want to have exclusively uh, what do you call a uh, pictures like this summary shots we can just talk please talk in be in touch with the organizers and please put up please don't forget to give your uh, subscribe share and likes in the youtube just kidding thank you so much sir. thank, thank you, you very much so kavya bye bye thank you thank you for your time session. thank you very much I'll Thank be online. You, if you have any doubts and all, people can ask me in okay, the chat sir, session. Okay, sir. We shall let wait for another one minute. Uh, can you please stop sharing the slides, sir? Meanwhile, we'll have uh, uh, wait for the query session. So, dear students, I hope you have all enjoyed the session. It was so interactive and energetic, and it was an enthusiastic uh, speaker, as I earlier said. Uh, it, this is quite important for your uh, exam point of view, and the sir have taken the path really good. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your time with us. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. All the best. Okay, sir, uh, can you please stop sharing this slide, sir? Yeah, yeah. Stop sharing. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, dear students, uh, I hope you have enjoyed this session. So. Kindly please uh, uh, share our YouTube channel, subscribe our Facebook page. You can also access the recorded video, 
and uh, the mcqs and all the announcement of the sessions will be made in our uh, facebook page and uh, this is an upcoming session for today uh, tomorrow and uh, which is the topic taken by dr balaji chinna swami at uh, 5 to 6 pm on uh, the topic asthma and this is the second topic uh, the gestation and olfaction which has been taken by dr kanimuri from srm medical college 3730 Uh, thank you so much sir uh, since we don't have any queries and it was really very informative session thank you thank so you much thank you thank you, thank you sir thank you students we'll see you to all tomorrow